Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about how to place elements of sets into the appropriate regions of Venn diagrams. So we're going to start with this example. It says, let U be the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, S the letters A, B, C, D, and T the set with the letters B, E, and D. We're going to draw a Venn diagram, label the sets, and place the elements in the correct regions of those sets. So you always start with a rectangle for the universal set U. Then you need a circle for each of the sets. In this case, we're gonna need a two set Venn diagram. So we have two circles, they have to overlap in case there are elements in common. You're gonna label one of them S and one of them T. Now notice that when we placed these sets into the Venn diagram, it had the effect of dividing the set U into four different regions. We have region one, region two, region three, and region four. I've only put these numbers here so that I can talk to you about the regions and you know which region I'm referring to. So it's not gonna be part of our final answer. So let's take a look at the elements we have, starting with the element A. A is in the universal set, as all of the elements are. It's in set S, but it's not in set T. So when we decide where to place A, keep in mind that you can only place elements in one region. An element cannot appear twice on the same Venn diagram. There is exactly one correct region to put each element into. So in this case, A has the characteristic that it's in the set S, but it's not in the set T. Well, the only two regions in S are regions two and three but region three is in T. So we have to put A into region two, where it's in S, but not in T. Next, we're going to look at element B. Element B is in S and in T. So that means that it's in a region that's in both S and T. And what S and T have in common is region three. So if we place the element B in region three, it has both the characteristic of being in S and the characteristic of being in T. Now, Next we have element C. C is in S, but it's not in T. So again, that would be region two. All right, now we're going to look at the element D. D is in S and it's in T. So D has to go into region three because that's the only region that's in both S and T. Now let's look at element E. Element E is not in S, but it is in T. So which region fits that description? So we have to put the element E in region four. Finally, we're gonna look at the element F. F is not in S and it's not in T. So we have to place F in region one. If I take away all of the region labels, our answer is this Venn diagram. Let's look at one more example. This is an example of a Venn diagram of three sets. So in this case, the universal set U is all the letters from A through H. S is A, B, C, D. T is B E D H and V is B C G H. We're gonna draw our Venn diagram, placing a rectangle and labeling it as U. And then we need three circles to represent the three sets S, T, and V. They have to overlap each other, and there even has to be a place where all three overlap, because it's possible there's an element that is actually in all three of the sets. You can label them any way you want. In other words, you could have had a T in the upper left instead of an S, but it wouldn't be wrong to rearrange them. Now, how many regions do we have in this diagram? We have the region in the very middle that's part of S, T, and V. I'm gonna label that one. So region two, I'm gonna let be this little piece that's in S and T, but not V. Region three, I'm gonna let that be the piece that's in S and V, but not T. I'm gonna call this piece region four, that's in T and V, but not S. The part that's just in the set T, I'm gonna call that region five. Part that's just in the set S, region six. The part that's just in V, I'm going to call region seven. And then this outside part, that's not in any of the sets. I'm going to call that region eight. All right, so let's talk about the elements one element at a time. Where does element A go? Well, element A is in the set S and it's not in T and it's not in V. So if you look at the set S, it is actually comprised now of four different regions, one, two, three, and six. But the only one that's in S and not in T or V is region six. So we're gonna place A in region six. 
Let's look at element B. Element B is in S, it's in T, oh, and it's in V as well. So we're going to have to place it in a region that's in all three sets. The only region that fits that description is the one in the very middle, region one. So we're gonna put B there. Okay, how about the element C? Well, C is in S, it's not in T, but it is in V. So we're looking for an element that's in both S and V. So it has to be where the two sets overlap, which is this football shape here. And that includes region one and region three. But region one is also in the set T. And remember, C is in S and V, but not T. So it must be that C is in region three. How about element D? Element D is in S and it's in T, but it's not in V. So S and T overlap here with regions one and two. We have one more piece of information. It's not in V and region one is in V. So it must be that D is in region two. Now element E. E is not in S, it is in T, and it's not in V. So E is in that region of T that doesn't touch S or V, which is region five. Okay, how about element F? Element F is not in S or T or V. So it is in this outside region, region eight. Now we have element G. G is not in S, it's not in T, but it is in V. So we're looking for the region that's in V but doesn't touch S or T, and that's region seven. So we're gonna place G in region seven. And last but not least, the element H. H is not in S, but it is in T and it is in V. So we need to have the element H be in both T and V, which means their intersection, which is this football shape piece here. But we also know that it can't be in S, so that excludes region one. So that means that H has to be in region four. Okay, well that was the last element. We have everything placed appropriately. I'm gonna get rid of those region labels and this is the completed Venn diagram. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.